Hello, I'm Ian, and this is a guide to my Mandelbrot Maps applet, which was the basis of my MSC project. This is the applet itself that we see just now. On the left is the Mandelbrot set, and on the right um, are the associated Julia sets. There is only one Mandelbrot set. The Mandelbrot set is a set of points on the complex plane. A point can be either inside or not inside the Mandelbrot set. To determine if any particular point is inside the Mandelbrot set, this is how we do it. We take the starting point, which we label Z. Then we say Z1 is Z squared plus Z. Z2 is Z1 squared plus Z. Z3 is Z2 squared plus Z z4 is z3 squared plus z, and so on, for z all the way up to z5, z6, all the way. This sequence of z's might diverge, in the sense that it might go off to infinity. If it does, that point is not within the Mandelbrot set, otherwise it is. The pretty colourings that we see on the screen just now, this pinkish glow, um, is based on looking at points that are close to the Mandelbrot set, but not quite within. All the points which are white are, um, we believe, in the Mandelbrot set. It's possible that a point may be miscategorised, but that's another story. <coughs> that's the Mandelbrot set. On the right are um, the Julia sets. There is a Julia set for every single point in the complex plane. That is, we may say that a particular point, C, parameterizes its own Julia set. So, um, given this point, C, which parameterizes the Julia set, we may test if a particular point is within the filled Julia set the Julia set being the boundary, so here the Julia set is the boundary of this curve, while the filled Julia set is everything in white. We can test um, if this point is in the filled Julia set by a fairly similar process to before. Remember that we said that the point C, a complex number, parameterizes the Julia set. We start out with <coughs> our point Z on the complex plane. Then we say Z1 is Z squared plus C. Z2 is Z1 squared plus C. Z3 is Z2 squared plus C. Z4 is Z3 squared plus C, and so on. All the way up through the Zs. If this series of Zs diverges, it goes off to infinity, spirally out of control, then that point is not within the Julia set, otherwise it is within the filled Julia set. Now remember that we said that um, there is a complex parameter C for the Julia set. This program allows us to explore changing the complex parameter C. As I'm moving the mouse around, the cross is showing the point um, C that we are taking. Remember that the Mandelbrot set is on the complex plane. An interesting result is that if we take our C from a point within the Mandelbrot set, like I am just now in all of these places, then the Julia set is entirely continuous. It's just one blob. If I take a point outside, then the Julia set shatters into infinitely many disconnected pieces. This leads to interesting things happening on the boundary of the Mandelbrot set, where things get very complicated. Even on the boundary, though, um, a point is either within or not within the Mandelbrot set, and so the Julia set will either be continuous or entirely fragmented. As an aside, when it's entirely fragmented, we say that it is a Cantor set.
Another interesting result is that the Mandelbrot set um, in the vicinity of the point C resembles the Julia set as a whole. Here are a couple of examples of that. This is zooming in and panning in Mandelbrot maps, which is done by click and drag to pan and using the mouse scroll wheel to zoom. We see this, these structures inside the Mandelbrot set. Now look at the Julia sets. There is a striking similarity of overall form in the vicinity of these points. Going back to the initial views, another example. Here again the Julia set resembles the Mandelbrot set. This is true at every scale, as we can see here. Another interesting result is that the Mandelbrot set contains lots of miniature copies of itself. For example, here is one. This resembles the whole Mandelbrot set as a whole. When we look at the Julia sets around about this vicinity, when we look at the whole Julia set, it seems relatively unchanging. But look at the middle. If we zoom in on this, this resembles what's going on with the whole Julia set with the, um, when we're looking at the whole Mandelbrot set. This process can continue infinitely. For example, here is a second level mini set. Again, we can zoom out all the way and we can see there's not much change. We zoom in, again, not much change. We zoom in all the way and then we see the same effect again. We can get some very pretty pictures like this too. The final few features um, of Mandelbrot maps to understand to aid in this exploration are this zoom slider which give a visual indication of how far we're zoomed in and can also be manipulated directly to zoom in or out. The contrast slider, which adjusts the color scheme for the pictures. Note that um, if you, the contrast is too low, you may get inaccurate shapes. If it's too high, you may get a very black and white picture. There's a happy medium in between. There is a save feature which allows you to save the images produced by Mandelbrot maps in a standard image format. And finally, there is a show link feature. This allows you, when you click it, to create a URL which you can then copy and paste, for instance, in an email. And you can send to your friend exactly where you are just now on Mandelbrot maps. That link there would have gone straight to this image. That's it. There's a lot of exploring that you can do with this program. Have fun.